Hello everyone. Today on Twitch, I decided to sit down and talk about the comics that have been released for Battle for Azeroth. Apologies in advance for the audio quality. Uh, unfortunately, it sounds a little bit more echoey than I would have liked, but I think it's still very much doable. Uh, three comics, the one with Jaina, the one with Magni, and of course the Winter Run Reunion. Now, do be careful, I am open to spoilers. I will be talking about stuff that goes down in Battle for Azeroth as well. Um, because, you know, these comics, they link to those events. So do be warned, spoilers ahead, and I hope you'll enjoy. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen on YouTube, as well as ladies and gentlemen on the Twitch. Um, a lot of you have asked if I could, you know, talk about the comics that they've released for Battle for Azeroth. Um, and the reason why I haven't gotten around to it quite yet was I was waiting for them to release all of them. Now, I've no idea if they're going to release more issues. I do recall from previous things that they were like free for Legion. Uh, so there might be more, but you know, there's plenty to talk about so that we're going to do today. Uh, of course, if you want to check out these comics for yourself, link is in the description down below, as well as they're up on the um, Cloud website. Yeah. Yeah. So howdy chat. Look at this. Jaina Reunion. This was the first comic that they released. And right away, people were well upset about the art style that they used for it. But keep in mind that that was before they released the one about the Windrunner reunion. So I, I guess we didn't have that much to complain about. So in this story, right, we uh, read about Jaina and what actually happened to her after Legion. A lot of people ask the question, like, okay, she left Dalaran. So now what? What is she doing? And we find out that Jaina, despite popular belief, is not a Dreadlord. Because, ha ha ha, that joke isn't old quite yet. Um, she actually fought her own war against the Legion. And they're sticking with the idea of Jaina is not against uh, fighting for the sake of the world. Um, she is against working together with the Horde. And in my opinion, with good reason. So yeah, she leaves Daladan behind. Um, we also get a confirmation that the relationship built up between her and Caligos. Something that we saw first in Tides of War. Uh, the bombing of Fedamore, him coming to a rescue, uh, they came together. It was also mentioned her Mr. Pandaria, and here we see that, uh, you know, she said goodbye to Kalik. There's definitely, definitely a relationship there, um, and it's hurtful, you know? These guys love each other. Kalik is way into magical girls, and Jaina is way into dragon booty. Match made in heaven. So yeah, during Legion... She goes about and uh, she kills them delicious demons. But the skeletons of the past, they still haunt her. Oh, Kerosh. Oh, Kindy, this panel though. Oh my god, I freaking love, 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 love how they portray Kerosh. Um, it, it just looks freaking badass. And this scene, uh, the gnome that you see on the floor, uh, this is Kindy. Kindy was a character uh, built up in Tides of War as well as murdered in Tides of War. Very, very emotional. If you've never read that novel before, I could definitely recommend it. Um, I, I don't feel so good, Miss Jaina. I don't feel so good. So even before that, you know, there was trouble between the Alliance and the Hordes. But Jaina always stood there as the peacekeeper. Prevented them from going to all-out war. She tried her best to uh, keep the peace going. Even up to the point where she stepped to the side as... Her father showed up in Warcraft 3. And he was like, daughter. Daughter, you cannot work together with these brutes. We must murder them all. Now, uh, Dalen Proudmoore uh, fought against the Horde with the Alliance of Lordaeron. He remembered the first and the second war. He remembered how they nearly lost their world. But Jaina never had that hatred towards the orcs. Even when she was little, she joined Arthas to the internment camps. To just have a little peek. And where Arthas saw nothing but monsters, she saw children. She saw... You know, something that was not supposed to be hated outright. She saw people. Um, so yeah, she made the choice to step aside as Rexar brutally executes her father. Like this panel right there on the right. Ew, my god. And she stepped to the side. And she regrets that even in Tides of War, where she returned to Stormwind. I believe she cried in front of her father's statue. And she was like, father, I'm so sorry. I should have listened to you. Uh, what kind of world could it have been? Her brother also died fighting against the Horde. I believe his ship was burned by the Dragonmark clan as they rode the enslaved red dragons. You know, she's lost a lot against the Horde. 
and she wonders like what could have been so now she decides to return home she decides to return to Kul Tiras, and um it's cool to see that we now also have confirmation that she did indeed go back to Kul Tiras before she went back to uh, stormwind as we see in battle for azeroth um we kind of wondered if she used the ship that her father used to get to her in Fadimore with Warcraft 3. Uh, but no, she actually went back to Kul Tiras and she listened in on the conversations. She uh, used the magic to disguise herself. And she listens to some sort of Memorial Day thing, I think. And they remember the Daughter of the Sea. They even have songs about Jaina in which she betrayed her home. She betrayed her people and she betrayed her father. When um, Rexar and the Horde went into Fadimore to take care of her father... Kaltiris was pissed, and they asked for retribution, but the Alliance was like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We, We're not gonna take care of this. But instead of being pissed off at the entirety of the Alliance, they were pissed off at the daughter who stepped to the side. And, yeah, they remember her. Like, look at this panel, man. Freaking Batman Rexar, her father, like, Jaina, help me. And Jaina's like, nope, nope, I'm together with Thrall now, Dad. You, you can't get between this. Her mother, Catherine Proudmore. Remembers her beloved husband. Um, we also get the confirmation that she uh, was the one who fought for Jaina in order to go to Dalaran to, t uh, to learn the ways of magic. We know that her father gave her permission to do so, but it was her mother that apparently, you know, pushed hubby to make it so. Um, then they're talking about, if I remember correctly, that the Alliance and Horde are fighting each other again. And that, you know, perhaps they should reestablish the allegiance that they have with the Alliance. But Catherine is like, no, 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 no. We're not going to ally with those that got my hubby killed. We're not going to do that. Um, this lady right here. Oh, God. Uh, Priscilla? You have House Proudmore. House Waycrest. Oh, God. Her name escapes me now. Chat, help me out here, please. Try to remember her name. Proudmore. Was it Waycrest? No, Waycrest Manor. They have Stormsong Valley. Ashvane! Thank you, Ashvane. Um, this is the leader of House Ashvane. And she is a longtime friend of Catherine Proudmore. They both lost their husbands at Fedamore. And she's been whispering in her ear for quite a while, right? And she's actually trying to actively take over from Proudmore. Where Proudmore has the military in Kul Tiris, And by extension, sovereignty over the entire region. Ashvane is like, you know what? The delicious ass, right? We can make use of this. And we can take over. Which they tried to do in Battle for Azeroth. Of course, Jaina hears the words that they're talking about them. Um, her mother blaming herself for Jaina. Tears in her eyes. You know. And she wants to come home. But she realizes, like, okay, these people, they do not like me. Now, the final panel, which I thought interesting. Like, they tell each other, we will fight with the forces that we have. Called Tears will stand alone. And Jaina is like, no, 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 you won't. I will stand with you. So I kind of wondered if there was going to be another comic that came after this. Or if there's going to be like an in-game event that's going to explain this. Um, so I kind of wondered about that. Of course, Jaina will still stand for her people. But the first time that we see it again in Battle for Azeroth is with the Siege of Lordaeron. Where she shows up with a ship. Then she's like, yeah, we're going to go to Kul Tiras, Which actually puts more weight on her return to Kul Tiras as well. Because she went there before. She is not unaware of the way that the people think about her they, she fully knows and still she steps up for that walk of, sh of shame for the sake of the alliance and for the sake of fighting against the horde which i really really appreciate um so yeah there not that much to be said about the comic besides Wait, the confirmation the what she did after leaving speaker. Daladan. this uh, one is my that personal favorite how cold um, thinks about her and I love the art style, Kaelic, but maybe I love the story how it's it? told, and it's freaking beautiful. So we have Magni the Speaker, right? And it's not a big surprise of what they're telling in the story. Which is the message of Azeroth got penetrated by Sargeras' mighty blade, and it's dying. That's pretty much the message out of the comic. But at the same time, I just love the way that they portray Magni communicating with the world. Because she doesn't talk in words so much. It's not a clear message. It's a feeling. It's dreams. And in this case, she uses the events of the past in order to tell him, like, this is what's going on. Um, we try to stop them. Be prepared for anything. She needs more than and help her. As he touches Azerite, the blood of Azeroth, the voices start talking to him. And it tells him, listen, Magni, just listen. 
as he kneels down in front of his wife, pregnant of their daughter Moira. His wife is also given a name, and they use that imagery in order to, you know, portray life, portray Azeroth, a soul, the soul inside the planet. Um, then his daughter is born, and uh, the way that the relation always worked between Magni and Moira was that Moira always believed that her father wanted a son, and that is the reason why um, they didn't really get along. That was the reason why it was so hard on her, that is the reason uh, why she never felt like she was good enough for him. But that wasn't really the case. I mean, it was. He was still a dickhead towards her. But at the same time, it was the passing of her wife that uh, made him so much harder on Moira. He wanted her to be ready. He wanted her to be prepared. And by doing so, he pushed her away, in a sense. Right? So then, you know, the imagery changes. And um, all these years forcing her to be something that she's not. Uh, and whenever something comes along that you can't control, you either give up or you make it worse. Make it worse, as in being too pushy, or give up. Uh, you know. Let it all go. And in this case with Azeroth, he is trying to learn from the mistakes from the past. We already saw the reunion between Moira and Magni. He is definitely trying to be better, right? Oh, it's I'm, I'm actually reading the panel as well. It's so sad, man. It's so freaking sad And she's dying, you know, Azeroth is dying. That is the message. So yeah, all in all this comic is my favorite because not only um, Does it portray the message of you know shit's going down with the world the world needs to be warned forget about your faction war Azeroth is dying and when your world dies you will have nothing to fight over anyways but the way that they portray the story portray the message they not only show the way that Magni is able to communicate with the world spirits, they also add more story to the history between Moira and Magni. They give a name to his wife, they explain why he was so hard on Moira, and he is going to try and do better. And it adds so much depth to it, man. That is why this one is my favorite, not to mention that the art style is just mwah, mwah. So yeah, chat room, uh, any questions about this one? Was Magni's wife ever seen before this? Not that I recall, no. I'm pretty sure this is the first time that they gave her a name and an image. Yeah. This one is the long-awaited Windrunner reunion. And if I oh, can zoom out a little bit. I do very much like this. I do very much enjoy the portrayal of the, the crystal shards. I do very much like this. My, my major problem with this comic is moments like... Oh, I don't know, this. Right here. Or, where are her kids? Where are her kids? Oh my god. Moments like this. Like, how? How did this ever release? It is so... Yeah, it, it could have been done a lot better. Um, but at the same time, there are also a couple of really cool panels. Like, if we look at... Oh, God, it's all the way down, I know. Oh, my God, where is it, though? This one. Um, like this one is pretty dope. But I've been told for people on Discord, like, I'm not an artist, right? Uh, but I've been told the people from Discord apparently it has something to do with like tracing or something like that. But yeah, I I'm not an artist. I'm just saying that certain panels are really cool. Other panels could definitely use uh, a bit of work. Yeah. Uh, so when it comes to that whole pendant thing, for those unaware that are like, what are you talking about? Um, this is from a D novel. Beyond the Dark Portal. In which is they see the following thing. So this is the moment, right? Uh, Beyond the Dark Portal is... Um, Horde has invaded Azeroth for the second time. The Alliance of Lordaeron has already been established. And they need to make a decision of going beyond the Dark Portal and take the battle to the Horde for the very first time. Big choice. They leave Adator behind, even though Adator is not mentioned in this book. Uh, <laughs> he would be headed in the Burning Crusade. Um, 
But yeah, a big choice, and she wanted to make sure that something was left behind for her sisters. So, let's see here. I have a special task for you, one that goes beyond your military duties, Illyria began. It's not Moutlin to think that I might not return, that none of us might. We do not know what we face on the other side. Verana looked troubled. They've been friends for decades, but she nodded. Of course. If I do not come back, do not come home, bear a message to my family. Tell them I took the fight to the orc's own world, to avenge Quelphalas, and to keep our people safe from future attacks. She followed Trellian's impassioned, implacable words, that they could not release the horror that was to hoard on other innocent people. A lump suddenly swelled in her throat. Tell them, she continued, her voice rough. Tell them, I went to try to save other worlds as well. Others who will, I pray, never know the pain of what we underwent. Tell them I chose to do this of my own free will, and whatever happens to me, my heart is with them. She fumbled in a pouch and emerged with three small necklaces. Each was graced with a glowing beautiful gem, an emerald, a ruby, and a sapphire. Verana gasped and looked up, clearly recognizing the stones. Yes, they're from the necklace my parents gave me, Illyria confirmed. I had the necklace melted down in Stormwind, and three lockets made from it. I will keep this one. She selected the emerald and fastened it about her throat. I wanted to give the other two to Verisa and Sylvanas when I... She bit her lower lip. Please, take these home with you, when you're able to return. Give them to my sisters. Tell them this way, no matter what happens, we'll always be together. Verana's eyes shone with tears that slipped down her cheeks. Illyria envied her ability to weep. The other ranger studied the inscriptions, which Illyria knew by heart. To Sylvanas, love always Illyria. To Verisa, with love, Illyria. So yeah, um, this was her farewell gift to her sisters. Uh, as they went beyond the Dark Portal, and as we now know, they not only defeated the Hordes, they were also forced to shut down the Dark Portal. They were recruited into the Army of the Light, and they were gone for many, many years. Whereas uh, Verissa would eventually meet up with Ronin, have some babies, uh, Sylvanas would be slain by Arthas, and become the Banshee Queen. But all this time, you know, the necklace was still a thing. Uh, you can actually find the necklace in game and bring it back to Sylvanas, in which she will burst out in song and, um, you know, sing Lemonade of the Highborn, if I remember correctly. And for many, many years, nobody knew where Lyria and Cerellian were. They were hinted at, suggested, and then finally, with Legion, they came back. And then, of course, people were like, yo, where's that Windrunner reunion at, though? We did see Illyria and Verisa talk with each other on the spaceship. I was gonna say Jenadar, but nope. Nope. It's a different one. Ah, uh, whatever. They were talking with each other on the spaceship, the one that we turned yellow and pimped out. Um, and, and Verisa did not have a lot of nice things to say about her sister. You know, leading the hordes, being a Banshee Queen. There wasn't a lot to be said. The Vindicar, thank you. That one, yeah. Um, so here we have them. We already have in-game, if you talk to Illyria and Trelli in installments, they will have this conversation uh, where she's like, yeah, 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 I'm back now. Uh, I need to see my old home. I need to talk to my sister. This needs to happen. And uh, Trellian, you know, he, he cut the necklace and he stands at her side. And as we can see, the void that Illyria took within herself is not exactly quiet. It is still very much whispering to her. Uh, prove your love. Slay him and free him from the curse of the light. Stop resisting. Give in and become one with us. It is only a matter of time. So the Void is still, uh, you know, telling her to be very naughty. And then the Sister of Sorrow, which is Verisa. Uh, Verisa, like I mentioned, uh, got together with Ronin. Ronin was the leader uh, of the Kid and Tor. He gave his life during the novel Tides of War, in which he drew the bomb that Garrosh stopped the Fenimore. He drew it onto himself to minimize the explosion and save as many people as he can. Uh, which, of course, this Verisa uh, wasn't entirely happy about Garrosh. Very much like Jaina, she wanted revenge. Um, she even met with her sister Sylvanas in the novel War Crimes, in which she was like, you know, he took my Ronin. That was it. That was everything. She lost Ronin, the one she loved, and there was 
it is really cool storyline building up between Verisa and Sylvanas. So which Sylvanas actually started to feel for Verisa, but in the end she backed out. Um, she told Endwin that she poisoned Garrus' uh, meal, his food, and that Endwin should decide uh, what to do with it. Because what screams courageous than having a prince decide what to do? Anyways, uh, she fucked over Sylvanas royally. And Sylvanas was really, really hurt. And I thought from that moment, like, okay, the Windrunner reunion, even if it happens, you know, her heart is closed. Verisa messed it up. Um, yeah, good luck with that. Did Odin have red hair? Yes, he did. Yeah. Um, but here we see them. Here we see them actually meeting up with each other. Uh, as she sees Verisa again, the Void Whispers. The throne of Silvermoon is yours by right. Take it. Deliver this weak one onto us. And we will grant her purpose. But she says, you know... It's under control. It's under control. And Verisa actually tells her that, you know, I I went back to also this panel though. This panel. I'm not sure if it's if it's beautiful or if it's god awful, but There's just something off about it, man. I don't know. Anyway, she mentions like this is what happens, you know, I met up with Sylvanas. She gave me the poison. Oh, uh, I scroll uh, past it, by the way. This is the very first time that we actually see her children. Uh, I don't believe they have models in-game. But, yeah, this is the very first time that her children are actually portrayed. They are high elf, high, sorry, half high elf, half human. The faces are wrong and her eyes, it just, it looks weird, man. It looks weird. Um... So then, they start reminiscing about the days of future past. We can see their little brother. What are you called again? Lirav Windrunner was the youngest brother of the Windrunner siblings. He dreamed of becoming a ranger like his three sisters. Lirav was killed when a group of orcs cut the way to Quelphalus and attacked the Windrunner clan. Several uncles, aunts and cousins also perished. Lirav's older sister, Illyria Windrunner, swore revenge and began hunting down all remaining orcs after the end of the Second War. Uh, so yeah. Liraf was kind of murdered by the orcs. Rip. And here we see them dancing and frolicking and thinking of days of better past. And as you do, you know, you think of days of better past by actually putting up your hand in the sky. And then, oh, there's Sylvanas, let me grab your hands. Because that's what you do. And then this, this, this panel. It is such a troll face, though. It's such a troll face. Like, lol, 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 lol. This is my hand now. <laughs> it's so... I want that as my profile picture, man. I want that as my profile picture. But here's the cool part, though. As soon as Sylvanas comes in... The Void gets really, uh, really upset. This one is dangerous. She is a threat and must be ended. Beware, beware this one. She seeks the death of all things, all possibilities, and her threats. Murder her, murder her, save yourself and murder her. Save the world and murder her. Unsk, unsk, unsk. Um, now of course, what is whispering to Illyria? It's the Void. It's not exactly uh, a truthful source. But it does seem to be very, very eager about taking care of Sylvanas. So how do they try to manipulate Illyria by mentioning that she is the death of all things, all possibilities, and her threats. So she, the Void wants her dead. To which Illyria is like, no, I'm not gonna do that. And then a couple of questions are raised out of this. Is it truly that the Void wants her dead and gone? Are they lying about how much of a threat she is in order to get Illyria to kill her? Or do they know, know more about Sylvanas? And even if they do, doesn't the Void itself want the end of all things? They do, but maybe not the way that Sylvanas wants it. There's a lot of things that they can work with here. We also talked about this for quite a few hours on Discord. And um, perhaps that's a theme that they're going to play with. Instead of just having the Light and the Void, they could also introduce a new player. Death. With Sylvanas as the ringleader. Perhaps what we heard in the audio drama, if you haven't heard the audio drama yet, there is one of Illyria and Trillian, and as Illyria learns more about the Void, she sees these visions, right? She sees these visions, and they clearly state that not all visions are to be trusted. The Light and the Void, they cannot see both sides, they do not know the future, only by those two things coming together can you get a glimpse of destiny. 
But even so, if those are ideas that they want to work with, one of those was, I believe it was Illyria finding us off and taking over from him. Which I think is really cool, to be honest. And then there is the whole uh, connection between Illyria, Trevelyan, and Arator. Time and time again, we hear Illyria mention that Arator is her anchor, that Trevelyan and Arator are those things that are keeping her sane. We saw in the Nightborn recruitment that Illyria does not have the Void under control. The Sunwell reacts to her. But she can't keep control because she has those two anchors, right? What did they take away, one of them? Like Telias and Avatel, they put the money on Arator. I personally put my money on Trevelyan dying. Part of that reason is because uh, Arator always had this dream in which he saw his father dead. Uh, Arator is part of the younger crew. And apparently grew up in Silvermoon as well. Um, confirmed this comic, which is kind of cool. But he's part of the younger crew. And if they keep taking out these older heroes, then they can never build up a new generation, right? So those are kind of like the main reasons why I put my money more on Trevelyan dying rather than Arator. Um, that death, her fur death, um, yeah, would kick her into Void Overdrive. But, you know, only time will tell in that direction. Um, so yeah, we see the division of those four play out of the past. They see what exactly happened to their lands. They hear about Arthas, they hear about what happens. And then they start to play a little game. As they ride their skeletal horses. They play a game of uh, tell one lie. And um, tell two truths. So three statements in total. And what we get uh, from Illyria. She says, I have missed you both terribly. The powers of the void are a tremendous gift. And I have no regrets about stepping through the dark portal so many years ago. Then Vrisa. She says that the blood elves, they can be redeemed. Uh, she has made her peace with the loss of her beloved Ronan, and she fears that she will lose them both forever. Um, then Sylvanas chirps in. She says, uh, At times, I wish I was still alive. I am proud to be Warchief of the Horde, and I would never betray you, my sisters. So then, they uh, reveal what was their lies. Kill her now, kill her now, the world will take her for what you need, now, now, now. They are really scared of Sylvanas. Um, it's time to end the game. Right, so Verisa reveals that she does believe that the Sindori will one day reflect on her actions and rejoin the Alliance. And she does fear losing them both, which means that the lie is that she's moved past Ronin's death. Um, yeah, that hasn't quite happened yet. Um... Then Illyria is that she did miss them, and she does not regret being away from Azeroth for so very long. But the Void Powers, they're not exactly a gift. Uh, it's a relentless struggle, but she is going to win. And then Sylvanas, my first reaction to Sylvanas' response, as the family reunion breaks up and they're all like, fuck each other and go away. Um, Verisa actually apologizes to Sylvanas. About what she did to her in war crimes. She apologized about just sending her a letter to refuse and hurting her so much. And like I said, I really thought that Sylvanas' heart had grown cold. That there was nothing more to be said or done about it. But instead, Sylvanas makes the decision of not notifying her ambush that she had waiting. Um, yeah, she, she lets them go away with the idea of... In the end, all will serve me in death. So then we look back to what she actually was talking about. She said that she would never betray her sisters. Well, we can clearly see that she was planning to betray her sisters all along. So I was like, okay, so that was her lie. So what are her truths then, right? So her truths would have to be that she is proud to be war chief of the Horde. And... And... That at times she wishes to be still alive. But then I was like, well, you know, it's not like Sylvanas really wanted to play this game. Also, also this face, though. This, this face right here. So then I was like, it, it doesn't really feel like Sylvanas wanted to play the game to begin with. So maybe she just lied about everything. So there was that. So I don't think we can really draw uh, a lot of conclusion out of that. So story-wise, I think that this comic offers the most interesting lore. I just really wish that the art style would have been so much better. 
Um, if, if the art was better, this would have been my favorite by far. And a lot of interesting things come out of this as well. There is the speculation about the Void seeing Sylvanas as a true enemy. Uh, how does that line up with the speculation we are going about Yaxxaron perhaps manipulating things when she tossed herself from Ice Crown? Um, well, how does that line up with the speculation about Volzin listening to the spirits and naming her war chief? The speculation was that perhaps that the old gods are behind it. So if the old gods made a war chief, if the old gods put her in this position, then why all of a sudden do they really want them? Did we really want her to be gone? Is it perhaps just the Void wanting Illyria to give in and kill her sister? You know, give in to the Void. Will Illyria lose Trevelyan or Arator? Uh, how is Verissa going to play a part in all of this? Is she perhaps the elf that dies at Teldrassil? If she is, then why don't we see a more aggressive response from Illyria at the Siege of Lordaeron? Uh, because her response to Nefanos seems to be very venomous. Could just be a reference to his days as a human ranger. Could be more at play. Um... There's a lot, there's a lot that you can work with in the comic, but we finally got to the Windrunner reunion. I know a lot of people actually wanted to see this play out in game, but I don't know. I, uh, I'm alright with it. They definitely gave a proper time. And, uh, yeah. Some cool panels, some really awful panels. Oh, those are boobies, my bad. I was going for the eyes, I swear I was going for the eyes. So chat room, Void might be lying though, and the Whispers may be Illyria's first reaction to see Sylvanas. Maybe? Yeah? Doesn't Sylvanas have ways to not die if she gets killed? She has Banshees, but she does not have unlimited Banshees. She's actually running out of Banshees. Instead of a magnificent set of Harbingers like cinematics we got, well, this. Well, keep in mind that next to the Harbingers, we also got comics with Legion, right? So there's still time for Harbinger episodes. That's what I'm saying, like the Jaina comics seems to be more uh, to come afterwards. So just because we got the comics and not Harbingers yet, doesn't mean that they're not going to be. Might just be still in production. Valkyr, what did I say? Did I say Harpies? Oh, I meant Valkyr, yeah. Could I make a video covering the comic and the story between Lead and the Battle for Azeroth? Um, yeah, I am planning to do a video, a short one, uh, to get people up to speed between Lead and the Battle for Azeroth. Like the, the key points of what you need to know. Think, for example, what happened to Mechni, uh, what happened with Sargeras, you know, key points on what people need to know. Can Sylvanas go into a Banshee form in a second, or does it only come up when she's angry? It appears she has control over it. When the Void whispers that Sylvanas true enemy is because she's undead and the Void aims to devour all life, like, it's pretty hard to devour all life if everything's undead, what do you think? That could definitely be an idea as well. Uh, like, we know that the Void Lords want to consume reality, uh, but perhaps they think, like, undead, that's not something we can eat. Perhaps it's a callback to the Legion and the whole undeath plague thing, but there's a lot that they can work with, yeah. Um, surely Sylvanas wanted the game, so she was the one who started it. Well, maybe she just wanted the information from her sisters and not so much play herself, right? Because the signal for her Dark Rangers was revealing the lie that she would never betray her sisters. That's why she didn't do it. And where did you get that idea from? I thought it was her hand because they zoomed in on her hands, right? Mm. Like here she raised her hands And then She puts it down like No 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 don't attack Instead of giving the signal of attacking Right Is it the old gods connected to death and the void There are some links yeah I just want audio dramas With the awesome narrator Yep same I do wish we got animated comics like Legion, though. Those were really cool. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. They were definitely cool. Uh, a Death Summer mentioned an animation for anime is coming up. Cool, cool. I hope Free Bambush wasn't for betraying her sisters. They were in case Verisa put another war crimes on her. Uh, no, because her rangers, like, re well, they were waiting for the signal to attack, right? So the rangers expected to attack regardless of what happened, right? They are surprised that she did not give the signal. Instead of, um, if the idea was, I will give you a signal if needed, then why even ask? Like, oh, my lady, you, you didn't give us a signal. What the hell? Mm, I think the Void might be scared because Sylvanas because she wants to end all life. And oh, there we go. Yeah. So a lot of people are in that mindset. Um, I just dived head first into Sylvanas and... <laughs> 
Uh, when avoid whispers, it's true enemies because he's undead and avoid aims to... Oh, we already did it one. Thank you very much for the bits. Illyria said she could ignore the lies of the whispers, but she doesn't seem to be ignoring the whispers that we see in the comic. Maybe those are not the lies, but the truth. Um, no, she's ignoring them. Like, the whispers are telling her to kill everybody, and she doesn't. That That's ignoring them. And ignoring them doesn't mean that they don't exist. Ignoring them means that she doesn't act upon them. Howdy, Jordan. What would Sylvanas even do if she managed to kill all life on Azeroth? Where would the spare body parts come from when they start to crumble? Um... I mean, if she is able to get everybody into the undeath, um, then there's nobody willing to fight her anymore, right? She would be the Lich King ruling over everything. Um, yeah. Then you could also... We know that there's a ritual in order to strengthen the Forsaken, the one that Nafanos went through. Uh, imagine her world domination of undeath army. She could easily pick up the Helm of Domination. She could easily enslave a year. She could easily take everything she wanted, right? Although I say easily, but potentially she could. I think the lie was that she wished to be alive again. I don't know, though. Is it safe to say now that Sylvanas is the real true evil? I'm still hoping that there's got to be more to it. Uh, but up to this point, what we've been getting is a lot of... Uh, yeah, Sylvanas. Weaponize Azerite, take out the enemy, live forever. That seems to be the very basic motivation right now. But I'm still holding on hope for the whole tell the Seal scenario. I'm hoping that there's got to be more to it. Than what we see right now from Datamine Dialogue and Quest and whatnot. The Void has no control of the Shadowlands. I didn't say that though. The, the question was, was there a connection to the to Undeath? And we have a connection in the Void with yak being the God of Death. As well as a uh, vision of the Lich King. Uh, why does the vision play out? Is is he perhaps, you know, influencing the Lich King? As well as Serenite and Icecrown Citadel being built up out of Serenite, the blood of yak -Saron. That was more the connection I was linking at uh, to Undeath. She held the necklace in her hand. That was not the signal. I don't see her necklace, though. I don't know. I don't know. Um... You heard that the Before the Summer audiobook is being narrated by anyways voice actor? So I've been told, yeah. So I've been told. Do you think Sylvanas really means the last part of the she doesn't want to appear weak to the rain Dark Rangers? I don't think that's the way the dynamic works amongst the Forsaken. Like, the Banshee Queen does not do weakness, right? Uh, could the Sylvanas lies be to herself? Like, she was lying to herself that she betrayed that she didn't, li uh, didn't like the Horde and she wants to be alive. But that's stupid. Right? Why would she lie to, to herself? Uh, counterpoint, Sylvanas doesn't tell anybody her plans. Even the finals was surprised and not Ruffy. Yeah, but when you're gonna have motherfucking assassins waiting in the trees, you motherfucking tell them what they're gonna do, right? Like this assassin right here. My lady, we were waiting, but you did not give the signal. From that we can deduce that there was a plan. I will give you a signal once I do kill my sisters. Right? Right? Ah. Wah. She would open a dark portal to another world. Hell yeah. Do you think Sylvanas really means the last part? Yeah, I think so. The Void Whispers have a dubstep track as background. Uh-huh. I doubt Sylvanas wants to kill everyone. Oh yeah, she wants to kill everyone. Sylvanas wants to live forever. She wants no enemies. So everybody dies. What's the difference between the Dark Rangers and normal undead? Uh, aren't the Dark Rangers similar to Sylvanas in former... Banshees that took the body back, if I remember correctly. Why do you think Sylvanas stops from killing her sister because right along with killing her people in the Before the Storm preview? Um, because they are her sisters. And as she says, you know, uh, I will let them cling to their sorrow-filled lives a little longer. In the end, they were going to serve me anyways. That's what I really like about it. Like, she still feels for her sisters, despite all that happened. Yeah, exactly, discreet. Sylvanas is Garrosh or Sylvanas is Kerrigan. I don't like either. Mm. Looking forward to Before the Storm. 
They think they're uh, equivalents to the wild gods in the Shadowlands. Death gods and that. Impossible to say, mate. I think of an interest for an expansion of Bolvar and the Undead Army in Northrend versus Sylvanas and the Undead as the players help Bolvar and the Threads. Uh, take care of Sylvanas, though. How can someone kill Sylvanas? Shoot her with a shotgun works. Tossing her from Ice Crown works. Those are two options. I imagine setting her on fire is a pretty effective way. What is that crack at the end? Is the horses breaking free? I think it's her dismantling the horses again. As in they were animated and she, uh, you know, doesn't need them anymore. Could Sylvanas be working as a replacement for Helia to avoid Caesar as servant of the Titan Keepers? But Helia didn't serve the Titans though. So doubtful. Doubtful that even the Void Lords know about it, right? Varisa has a lot of anger at her sisters. Yeah, she does. Would you rather serve Sylvanas or Bolvar? Um, I think I'd rather serve Sylvanas, to be honest. What the fuck is happening with the fishes at page 21? Who feet are they? 21. 21. Those? Isn't that like, uh... Hang on, which one of you is wearing a brown cloak? That would be Verisa, right? Or maybe, oh, Illyria could be as well. It's basically them stepping up and taking, uh, getting rid of their crystals, right? Shattering the bonds that they used to have. Look at them being happy and shit. Look at that, dude. Oh my god, I can see where Sylvanas gets the troll face from now. Look at that guy, he is well amused. Well amused. Guess showing how she could control the dead, right. Um, doesn't Illyria seem pretty uppity with Sylvanas' spoopy ghost powers since she is a step away from being bananas herself? Sorry, what? What are you talking about? That is a halfway lull. Yep. Yep. I actually had to check this panel like three times, but that's mainly because my mind is in the gutter most of the times. I like this panel though, you know. I really like this panel. Like she's just a regular old elf and they're like fucking super saiyan elves. It's amazing. Oh, sisters! Stop fighting! Oh, beautiful. Yeah, these, <laughs> these faces though. Right, I, uh, I think that will do, chat. I think that will do. Yeah, the teeth are actually absolutely horrendous. Although there are cool panels in there. Definitely cool panels as well. Just wish all of them were cool. Look at this. Like fucking ripping guts out and shit. Ah, well. Uh, right then, ladies and gentlemen on YouTube. I hope you really enjoy this quick coverage of... The Power Rangers. I mean, the Windrunner sisters. Um, yeah. Let me know what you think in the comments. Because these are mainly just my opinions. So let me know what you think about them in the comments down below. And on to the next time, guys. See ya!